welcome to episode 21 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I am the dyer and yarn store owner behind Paper Crane Yarns, which is located in central Alabama, USA. Um, you are likely to hear my baby in the background making lots of adorable sounds. Um, she's been very talkative these past few weeks now that she's actually over two months old, which I cannot believe. But she's here with me and just babbling away. So um, hopefully you enjoy that <laughs> um, because I, I love it. So yes, hopefully you like that. Um, today is October 7th, 2022, and it is a Friday morning. I am in my shop. We're going to open here soon. I don't have long to record. So that's my motivation for not letting this be an hour long podcast. Um, we'll see if I accomplish that goal. Some of you may enjoy that. I like long podcasts, but but yes, I, I have a tendency to run long, so I'm going to be concise, at least in theory. Don't we all say that? Please, if you would, take a moment to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't and would like to, all those YouTube things, because they do help for my channel and therefore my business to grow and um, I could really use some of that right now. This is, <laughs> it's a hard time to be a small business owner, but um, I don't want to trade it for anything. So, so yeah, if you don't mind doing one of those things, I would be really appreciative. So let's start with my cup of coffee. <laughs> I don't usually talk about what I'm drinking. Um, I've mentioned in prior episodes that my husband and I roast our own coffee and we roasted this batch last night and it is a medium to dark roast. These are, um, I want to say these are a honey processed bean from Mexico. We order different ones each time and some we've, we order again and again and I think this time I got the, the honey processed from Mexico. But they're really really good and I'm just drinking it with some oat milk. Um, super yummy. Uh, okay, so finished objects. I have three to show you and um, one of them I'm currently wearing. So my last episode, I was talking about how I was about to cast on for two uh, projects and they are both complete. I didn't record for about a month and I managed to knit all the things apparently. And this is just everything I hoped it would be. So um, I talked a lot about the yarn in my last episode and um, the process for how I picked my colors and I had asked you guys to help me pick out my palette. Um, I was, I had four possible um, contrast color options and I was trying to decide between two of them for one of the colors and so um, if you did see that previous episode you can see that I picked this Victorian colorway instead of the Lacewing colorway and I should back up and tell you that this pattern is called the Cottage Swancho uh, by the designer Olga and I cannot remember her last name. I need to read that and I'll have it down below with everything else but she also goes by or used to go by Handmade Closet but I don't see her listed as Handmade Closet um, in places anymore so she may have switched from going by like a designer name to her name but either way, um, I will have her linked below and she is an incredible designer. So I was so excited to knit this Swancho and the yarn I used was from Lambstrings, who is my favorite um, indie dyer. And so, yeah, I used four different colors. I'm gonna stand up and show you this beautiful sweater. So as I mentioned, it is a Swancho. So it has this beautiful Swancho design. <laughs> And I mean, I'm sure you can gather, but that is a sweater poncho. So it has this beautiful oversized um, poncho shaping. And then of course, these itty bitty sleeves that start all the way down here. So of course, as I was knitting it, the yoke <laughs> knit all the way down to here before you actually separate for the sleeves. And then you just knit a couple of inches after the separation for sleeves. So once you get to about here, of course, you're done with the color work except for this small sleeve section. So it knits really fast at that point. Um, so yeah, this is everything I hoped it would be and more. I really love this so, so much. 
Um, it's a DK weight, so it is pretty warm. I mean, super, super warm, actually. <laughs> so I, I'm excited to wear this as a regular um, in my wardrobe rotation for it this colder year, for the, for the colder parts of the year, rather. <laughs> um, so my palette, this the blue shade is her Camp Crystal Lake colorway. The purple is Victorian, and this creamy pink, which is also speckled, is Petunia. And then the star of the show, in my opinion, is the Apothecary colorway, which is a stunning variegated gold-brown color. And, um, yeah, so... I'm sure you can see just how beautiful the drape is, how well the fabric um, kind of gets along. It, it's really, like I said, everything I could hope for. And of course, I knit very long sleeves. Um, I knit them a little bit longer even than the pattern called for. So, I mean, this could actually, yeah, it's perfect. I like the way that the yarn sort of striped here in the ribbing for the cuff. Um, the only modification that I made to this pattern was, of course, I did knit this cuff a little bit longer, but I also changed the color work palette on the sleeve because, so one thing I mentioned in my last episode when picking my colors, I was worried that this purple shade, the mauve, would not be a high enough contrast with the gold because even though they're different um, families of colors, holding the two skeins side by side, the contrast looked really low and so I could have knit a swatch of the color work um, and of course I didn't because I don't I don't gauge swatch I didn't gauge swatch for this um, I kind of just always go with the needle required in the pattern and um, yeah so I could have tested it but I chose not to and while I do think it's beautiful and I was trying to sort of mimic uh, Olga's sample knit. I liked her color palette a lot and looking at other people's pat, pat, uh, projects on Ravelry, I think we all kind of wanted to imitate the same design. It, it really is beautiful. But you can see even here the very low amount of contrast. Um, and I did get a lot of feedback from you guys. You guys are so great with all your comments on my last episode and um, I still need to go and finish responding to some of them. Um, but I had some really amazing comments, uh, very helpful sort of feedback and tips and some of you are saying that you actually prefer a low contrast like this and um, yeah I agree this this is beautiful and I do think this looks it looks pretty um, it's just kind of a shame to me that you lose some of that beautiful detail I'm sure you could see when I was closer that it's it they're sort of stars um, and uh, yeah so you kind of lose some of that effect in person you can see it a little bit more um, when when it's bright when it's dark you can't see it at all so so that is yeah I I was worried about that and it did kind of happen but it's all right um, so yeah other than that it's perfect oh the modification I made that I mentioned I did change the color work a little bit on the sleeve because one of these rows was supposed to have more of the purple color but because you did the purple here and you knit some rows of color work without any purple and then the purple wasn't going to show up again until like maybe this blue stripe here. So instead of wanting, instead of carrying my yarn down or reattaching the yarn, I wanted one less end to weave in. So I just did the blue and yeah, very simple modification to the pattern. That's what I did. Um, yeah, speaking of carrying your yarn and floats, um, I'll take this off in a bit when I try on my other finished object and show you the floats, which... I don't think I've, I've never knit floats that went on. That had to be carried for so many stitches. Some of these rows, your floats, your, your stitches were maybe like 13 to 15 stitches apart from where you, like say you knit a purple stitch and then you had 15 gold stitches and then a purple stitch. And so there was a lot of room for carelessness and this could have ended up puckering really badly but I I was good and I uh, wrapped my floats I carried them all the way through so I think the most amount of stitches that I allowed for the the knitting to go on without carrying the float was like five stitches 
that was the max because some rows there were five in between and so I just kind of decided to knit those ones loosely and it worked out so I was checking my fabric although I don't gauge swatch I do pay close attention to my fabric as I knit so because it was looking okay and I was being very careful um, and if anything looked too tight I would take it out and redo it so the, the color work actually turned out really really nice with zero issues um, so if you're if you're hesitant to knit a project where the color is so spaced out and you're kind of worried about the floats I would say just take your time and just make sure that you're carrying the yarn and you can totally do it um, so I have so for this project it called for um, the yardage requirements equal to four skeins of DK of, of the um, main color and one each of all of the three contrast colors. So I have a good bit of yarn left, which is kind of exciting because I never used to have DK weight yarn um, in stash and now I do. So I think that the sea glass sweater by Wool and Pine called for DK weight. Um, so eventually I think I can knit that one with all of my new DK scraps. So that's a project that I'm looking forward to. Um, but here's what I have left of all of my contrasts. And my scale has been without batteries for a little while, so I can't weigh them. But if I had to guess, I would say these are probably all about 40 grams out of 100. So um, yeah, lots and lots of leftovers. And then I did have nearly an entire uh, skein of my main colorway left. So um, I did knit, there's only three sizes for this pattern, if I recall correctly. Um, because it has so much ease and of course you could change your gauge if you wanted to achieve something bigger or smaller but I did the smallest size which I think is called a small medium um, so if I had decided to knit maybe more rows or um, yeah there's ways I could have used up more yarn but I think this is already the very perfect length I was actually a little bit worried when I blocked it that I blocked it a little too big but I, I think it's just right um, so yeah I have lots of yarn left so I could either save this for something like a sea glass or the sea glass hat and have a, a maybe a matching hat with the sweater or some other kind of color work project where I could have some matching garment or um, I even think I could probably get away with like a color work like maybe another soldatna crop by Caitlin Hunter the first one I knit um, doesn't fit super well and I knit the chart wrong because it was my first color work project so I could maybe redo it Maybe I'd probably have to throw in some other yarn, but I could, um, yeah, possibilities. I, I don't know. Um, I carried it in this project bag, which is one of my designs. Um, I kept this one for myself months ago because for this panel in the front with these adorable foxes and bunnies, I sewed it upside down. Um, this is the right side up. So I got to keep this one and I thought it actually matches my pattern pretty well, uh, my color choices. And believe it or not, this sort of, you know, it's a medium sized drawstring bag, certainly not really a sweater bag, but up until the very end, I my sweater and all of the yarn stayed in here pretty well. Like I was able to close it all the way and that's with my Haya Haya needle case. So these bags, it's sort of like a TARDIS from Doctor Who. Um, I think they're really capable of a lot. So. Yep, I used this bag and um, I'm going to show you some close-ups of this yarn because lamb strings, they do such a, a beautiful job. This is Petunia. Uh, the only downside with this colorway was the speckles didn't really get a chance to come out too, too much. It's very lightly speckled, but the, and I think it's getting kind of blown out, but the speckles in here are really beautiful. This is Camp Crystal Lake, which actually has some of those same golden tones from the main color. Um, Victorian is, is a pretty, it's pretty much just a tonal. And then Apothecary, again, getting blown out now, but you can see there's some beautiful places where the dye has broken and variegation in the gold and the sort of mustard and brown and yeah. So I am so, so happy with this project. So my next finished object, these are uh, the other project I talked about wanting to cast on in my last episode and I did and they're done. So this pattern is the Water for Elephants pattern by Yvette Noel or Noel, um, probably Noel, Yvette Noel. Uh, yeah, Water for the Elephants. 
This is a sock pattern that uh, comes in one size. You could change your um, gauge probably if you wanted to make them bigger or smaller. And of course you can knit the foot to any length, but as far as the leg goes, um, maybe change your gauge. I would stick with the stitch count because it is an all over uh, charted color work. But yes, so they are done and I love them so much. I wish they were mine, but these are a gift for my mom. Um, I used a combination of Schopel Wool, Zauberball Crazy, and I apologize for my pronunciation. Um, Spanish is my thing, German not so much, but I again will have this link below. And this is the colorway that's here on the screen. I also cannot pronounce this in a, I think, um, the way that it's meant to be said. So, but you guys were so great. I had multiple people tell me on my last episode that the translation is uh, Little Fox, which is adorable. And so that's the, the colorway name for this stunning yarn. So that's the Zuber Ball uh, or Zuber Ball. I would love to know how to pronounce it. I think I will do my research today and figure out the proper way to say all of these things. You know, I studied linguistics in college. These things are important to me, so don't think otherwise. But yes, I've been busy as a new mom and getting my business going again. So I haven't had time to look that up, but I will look into it. So yes, that's the beautiful yarn. And these are so much fun to knit with because you can never predict the, the way that the marling, um, this barber pole effect in the yarn is going to play out. So you can see each sock is beautifully different. Um, yeah, I can't decide which one I like more. This was the first one I knit. And so then I just finished this one recently. Um, yes, absolutely beautiful. So I held it, um, my, my contrast color was an undyed merino. Um, this is a 75-25 merino nylon fingering weight and of course so was the undyed. And I used a nine inch circular needle, needle um, a 2.25 millimeter. That's what I use for all of my socks. Um, so yeah, let me show you a close up. So as you can see, there is an elephant here in the pattern on both socks. I have not wet blocked these, but I think that the elephant still uh, shows up pretty well. And so I might not even have to with them being on sock walkers and just kind of stretching out. And so yes, the color work extends all the way down the foot. Um, the heel is an eye of partridge heel. This was my first time doing one of those, I, I think. And I really enjoyed it. And then this is the inside of the sock. So this would be the inside of the leg. But I actually like this side better. I just I just think it's beautiful. Not that I don't love the elephant, but this is so special. I think I might have to take this chart and apply it to some other patterns. But yeah, I, I really love all of the, the marling and this yarn. And there are so many colorways of the Zuber Ball. I feel like there's a lot of possibilities for projects you could do in terms of color work. Um, it's, I would say, very similar to Spin Cycle, but I, I believe Spin Cycle, the dyed in the wool, is the one everybody always uses. I, I think, I want to say that's a sport weight, whereas this is a fingering weight, but I'm sure you could probably adjust your gauge if you needed to, if you wanted to use this, which is a more, a more affordable, maybe alternative to Spin Cycle. I would probably look at getting a Zobra Ball um, or find a, a pattern that you love that's in a fingering weight to, to apply this to. Yeah, <laughs> um, big, big fan. I've never used Spin Cycle, so I can't talk. I, I've seen it in person, but I've never knit with it, so I can't uh, really talk too much from experience. But just from the appearance, I think you could do something similar if, if your heart desires. Um, so yeah, I really love these. Now that I've shown them to you, I can give them to my mom. I will be sad to not have them around, but I have enough yarn, I think, to make myself a pair too. So I will at some point um, make myself a pair. This might be a little bit short with the yardage, and if that's the case, I could probably omit part of the pattern because this is a um, cuff down. I could probably omit a little bit of the color work here and just, um, or even just do the toe in a different yarn, maybe like a bright red or something. So yeah, 
Uh, I will eventually have a pair, but these ones are for my mom. My last finished object for today is the Getaway Cardigan by Alicia Plummer. Um, this is one of her newer designs, and this is knit out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the sweatshirt colorway. Um, I had nine skeins to start with, and this took just a little bit over eight, so I still have most of my ninth skein. So, yeah, I got a, a whole long cardigan for about eight skeins of the Brooklyn Tweed. It has been um, blocked with a lanolin-based soap, which is how I block all of my wool projects. Um, so it has softened and, and grown quite a bit from when I first finished it, of course. And so at the, uh, what am I trying to say? So I actually think after blocking that I could have even had a little bit more yarn left over because the I do think mine is just a little bit too big. The sleeves are perfect in terms of length. They are long, but I could roll them and I do like my sleeves to be longer, but there is a little bit more positive ease in the sleeve than I would have liked. I would have liked it to have been a little bit more fitted. Um, not that it's not cozy, but I don't think it's very flattering for me. There's a lot of extra fabric in the arm and I I want to say the sample knit photo and this is where a gauge swatch would come into handy because this might have had something to do with it but mine definitely looks a little bit more like positive ease than the the sample knit and so I did the second size the second from the smallest so I I'm pretty sure but uh, but yeah there's a little bit more ease than I would that I think would be flattering for my body. But to talk a little bit about the, the pattern, so I'll show you the full pattern here. It is, I guess you probably won't be able to see the bottom of it. Um, it goes down to, wait, here we go. Here we go. So it is fairly long. Um, there's a beautiful um, seaming, external seaming detail here with the shoulder. There is a shawl collar so you've got this beautiful thick collar band that folds over and of course in the back there's a really unique construction and shaping to give it this um this ability to kind of stand up and to put this sort of spine on the back and unfortunately you can't see it too well but the back is an is an all over textured pattern that is also mimicked on the sleeve, the pockets. And I, I, yeah, I forgot to mention, this has pockets and they are wonderful and functional and really, really awesome. So, yep, that is my getaway cardigan. Um, I do think if it was closer fitting, it would be a more flattering cardigan for my shape. I could probably belt this if I wanted. Actually, I think a belt would be cute. Um, I may have to do that so that it's a little bit more of like how I would prefer it to fit. Um, I do wish I had it in a different colorway. I don't think gray is my color. I always really love gray. I think it's beautiful, but um, I used to have black hair and I think when I had black hair, it was more suited for me. But with this hair color, I think it kind of, yeah, I don't think it's really my color. So yeah, the, the size of it, the color of it, not my favorite. Um, I would recommend the pattern though. It was fun and you do get a beautiful piece at the end. So if you're looking for a nice oversized cardigan or a long cardigan or a cardigan with pockets or just something interesting to knit because the construction was really fun, um, yeah, maybe consider doing this. It, I had to do provisional casts on and uh, cast on, cast, provisional cast ons <laughs> and seaming and different fun stuff. Um, it is knit flat. So there was no sticking involved. I think this would be a really great first time cardigan pattern if you've yet to knit one. Uh, maybe if you're afraid of something like sticking, this would be a good alternative since it's knit flat. And it didn't really feel that daunting. Um, it did take a while to knit, but I didn't feel slowed down by the, the purling or the knitting flat. So yeah, that's the getaway cardigan. Um, I do recommend it. It is beautiful. Um, there's a close-up of the colorway. It's 
it's a very lovely color. I wish it was more suited for me. I would have preferred to have knit this, I think, in the in the hayloft color or postcard. Um, I initially purchased this yarn back in actually almost a year ago, and I was going to do a cable knit pullover with it. So when I was pregnant, I changed my mind to do the cardigan because I wasn't sure what my body would be like postpartum. Um, so yes, I, I do wish I would have picked a different color for this particular project, but yeah, that's that. And while I don't have my other sweater back on, I will show you the floats real quick because they're intense. <laughs> so the sleeves are inside, but those are the floats for the inside front of the, uh, of the cottage swan show. I think overall they're fairly neat. There's just a couple of rows that I think I probably could have been a little bit neater on. But yeah, overall I think it, it worked out just, just fine. But now for works in progress. I have two. I don't have very much on the needles right now. I um, actually, when I finished those socks, I had finished this already. And so I had nothing cast on, um, but I, timed that perfectly because I was um, waiting for the Stephen West 2022 Mystery Knit Along to start, which started yesterday. Um, yesterday was Thursday the 6th. And so I kind of got to go into it without um, the stress of having multiple whips and wanting to get things done for fall and winter. And so yeah, I'm really, really glad with my timing. So now I just that's my main project, which I will show next. And that said, um, if you don't want to see spoilers, I would skip that portion, but I will say it again when I'm getting there. But first I'll show you my other work in progress. And um, this bag, I forgot to show this last time. I purchased this over the summer when my husband and I went to uh, one of the cons that we went to. The I think it was Magic City Con. Birmingham is known as Magic City and uh, it was the Magic City Con, which was a lot of fun. but. There was a vendor there and I think her, she, I think she goes by talk nerdy to me, <laughs> but um, I can't find her on the internet. So I need to look for her again. But she had this bag which has coochie copies from um, Bob's Burgers <laughs> and it's all of the, the main characters as coochie copies. If you like Bob's Burgers, then this probably speaks to you like it did for me. I saw it across the con and made a beeline to buy it and that's the only thing I bought. I didn't expect to buy anything at the con, but anyway, this I was sold. Um, there's a rainbow zipper with unicorns. <laughs> so I had to get it and I did. So yes, um, so I have a work in progress in here and it is something you've seen before if you have watched my, uh, my podcast. I did a test knit for Lauren Rad a couple of months ago for her um, one of her new sock patterns or newer sock patterns and it's P-Y-R-I-F-E-R-A. I think it's Pyrifera? Pyrifera? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a name for, um, oh man, I wish I had the pattern in front of me. I will have the pattern of course linked below, but the name of it is based off of an element in nature that she was inspired by and so yes, it's a stunning pattern. I was very grateful to test knit it. And um, I only completed the one sock at the time. Uh, so I decided to finally go ahead and knit myself the second. This is in my cottage colorway. This is a paper crane yarn uh, colorway. Um, again, cottage, which funny because I'm wearing my cottage swancho and I have my cottage sock here. But yes, this is my cottage colorway. It is a lace design on the sock. Um, this is the front, so this is the front of the leg. So the side panels are stockinette. Um, so the front and the back, you get this beautiful lace pattern. And I have been wanting to finish these socks so that I could wear these with, um, since they're longer, I could wear these with some ankle high boots or something like that. And yeah, just have this beautiful lace pattern over a pair of tights with a dress or a skirt, maybe with this sweater, we'll see. Um, yeah, I could get away with that. So here's an up close, hopefully it doesn't get too blown out. Again, this is my cottage colorway, which I do have some available in my shop or on my website right now if this 
intrigues you. Uh, it's one of my favorite colors and if you watch Marquita of Marquita Makes or Naughty Crush, she's here on YouTube and she's on Instagram. She too loves this colorway and in fact I just sent her a couple more skeins. She has a beautiful crochet shawl that she made with the DK um, weight of this color and so you should go check out her channel if you want to see this and maybe a crochet application. So yeah, that's what I'm working on. Not much to show you because I just barely cast it on um, before I didn't have any more time to knit on this and then the next day, I want to say I cast this on on Wednesday and then the next day the knit along started plus I have been busy with getting my, uh, my bags done for my shop update that is tomorrow and more on that later. I just have the cuff cast on, um, but I am using a Woolen Forest uh, Progress Keeper or stitch marker. This one is a moon and star. So yeah, here's the, the cake of cottage, the cottage cake. <laughs> so that's that. Um, yeah, I will have this done uh, pretty quickly, hopefully, so I can wear them maybe before October is over. Yeah, that's my, my project. And now I am going to talk uh, MCAL, so the Stephen West 2022 Mystery Knit Along Shawl. I'm going to go into that now, and again, the pattern just started getting released yesterday, so if you would like to avoid spoilers, or if you're participating and haven't cast on, or for whatever reason, if you want to skip ahead, I would skip ahead, um, yeah, some amount of minutes. <laughs> hopefully, I, I've never done the chapters thing, but I need to take the time to figure that out, and hopefully, maybe I had a chance to do that today, and you can just skip ahead to the chapter, but if not, I will try to do a timestamp. If I remember to do so, I have a lot on my ma my mind right now. But anyway, skip ahead if you want to avoid. Uh, I think you probably know the drill. <laughs> but so this is in a new project bag of mine for myself. <laughs> um, this was this is part of my my big project bag update that is tomorrow, and I had to keep one of these for myself. So um, I think I have some. Kind of vlog footage that I'm going to insert at the end of this video and I talked a little bit about this but yeah I had to keep something. I had so many beautiful bags and I don't buy bags I mean typically other than the one I just showed you. I've only ever purchased two project bags so I make them for myself. Um, so yes I had to keep one and I love this one. There's this amber linen <clears throat> with um, a dark navy fabric with mushrooms and ferns and the inside fabric for the lining is acorns, so lots of beautiful autumnal vibes. So my colorway choices for this project, you know what, I'm gonna go grab the skeins. Okay, so the colorways that I'm using for this project are all my hand dyed yarns. I am using, for my two main colors, I've got plum tree and wood fire clay, and these are both on my merino singles base, and then my contrast is um, ginger carrot cake which is a brand new colorway and I think these are just incredible together um, this has so much depth to it that I think is being a little bit too illuminated by the light so you may lose some of that it's really hard to photograph I found to um, capture all of the the depth of shades and um, yeah but regardless so these are my two main colors and this is my contrast and or my accent color um, so we haven't used this one so far for this week. I watched his live yesterday, of uh, Stephen West, about the, the Mystery Knit Along, and he said next week, I think, we'll be introducing this and the Cable Needle, but so far we don't have either. So it's just the two main colors. So um, I will show you my progress so far. Yep, that's That one's mine. My two cakes and the knitting. So I am not super far yet. I've only done the initial sort of cast on and repeat for the, the cast on um, to get it started and then 
there's of course a repeat section that you do so many times and I'm on the last row of the first repeat so I think I have 10 more repeats of the number of rows that there are um, so yeah I've just kind of started again I've been super busy with my shop update so I intend on doing a lot of this this coming week um, and over this weekend now that the shop update is almost behind me but here is this really intriguing design. So this is the, let me see, how can I best show this to you? I don't think it, in my sample here, it looks like it makes a lot of sense. Again, I don't have a lot of project uh, progress, but I know what this is going to look like because I, since I started it and once I got past a certain point, I did look ahead to get an idea of some of the, so right here with this sort of big textured, what looks like a big knit stitch, it actually is a series of these I-cord rows. So it's sort of like your knitting has a bunch of gaps in it. And then you actually go in and by hand, so you've got all these I-cord sections and you twist it and then you pull up by hand, you sort of braid this row to get this very interesting design. So there's the first one, and then you just go down and you pick up, I don't think I'm showing this too well, but you pick up each I chord band, and you'll do this all the way down the pattern. So it creates this really interesting sort of um, column of what looks like a giant knit stitch and then you've got the chevron pattern going on so um this year's design is called twists and turns and so this was um for me unexpected i, I wasn't expecting these this chevron I, it does make sense there's a lot of turning involved with knitting this pattern but, but yeah so i'm excited to see where this goes i do love my color choices i'm very happy with them although as i was knitting these two together i realized i have kind of already knit a shawl in this color except for the, the orange shade. Um, I should grab that and show you. Yeah, so you can see I tend to make pairings of colors like these apparently because in this four, four color project I have, uh oh, baby's crying. Um, you can see I've got some similar projects. <laughs> Apparently I have an eye for these colors. Um, this was actually the 2022 Lyrical Knits Mystery Knit Along. This was the one she did based off the Princess Bride. Um, this one was a lot of fun. I do her, I've done her knit alongs both years in a row and she did confirm to me that she's doing one in 2023. So I look forward to that and I'm secretly hoping that it is labyrinth themed. That's going to be my, my guess, my bet. So if you do the Lyrical Knits uh, Mystery Knit Alongs, let me know what you think she's going to theme next year's off of because I'm thinking Labyrinth. Something just tells me Labyrinth. Um, maybe it's just hope, but yeah, that was that one. So I'm knitting a similar project. Yeah, so excited to get on with Clue 1. And uh, I think that's all of my knitting that I have to show you. So now I will talk a little bit about the bags that I'm bringing to my shop tomorrow, Saturday. October 8th, <laughs> October 8th. Let me grab those and show those to you. So, um, as I'm recording this, I realized there was a couple of, there were a couple of acquisitions that I got that I forgot to bring here so I can't show you. I'll show you next time. Um, so yeah, I'll just talk about my shop update. So I have six bag designs coming tomorrow to my shop. And if you follow me on Instagram, um, if you don't, you should, but if you do, you may have already seen these designs. So I have um, six bags coming. I have 11 designs to uh, total that should have been in this update, but it's taken me a long time to get these six done because of the baby and maternity leave and all of that. So I decided to go ahead and do my update with just six bags for now, and I'll do the other five designs, hopefully um, early November. So my first design, I have this axolotl bag and I had a thought the other day that really made me laugh. Um, I made a reel about it on Instagram 
But if the baby axolotl called an axolittle, that's adorable, and if not, it should be. So yeah, axolotl bag. I love how vibrant this one is. They're like in a crystal underwater cave, and then the inside of the fabric, it's almost like a purple agate. And so I did um, change the design for, for these bags. If you've purchased one in the past, they used to have baby. I really hope you can hear all those sweet baby sounds because they're so cute. <laughs> I hope you can hear that. I hope she's not too far away from the microphone, but it is the cutest, sweetest sound. Um, I just had to take a break to feed her and care for her, and so now she's livened and awake and excited. But I'm going to try to get back to this. Um, she's definitely the most welcome distraction for me, so I have to... I, while I was feeding her, I already thought about 10 things I forgot to talk about that I wanted to, and so I'll save those for next time, but, so back to my, my shop update. Um, so yeah, I think I already showed the axolotl bag, and it's super cute. The contrast linen fabric is purple, and it's got gold metallic. <gasps> She's just chatting away. So, I'll have some of these available. In a similar vein, I have these Space Cats bags. Um, they are like a pastel with, oh, I hope you can hear this, I really do. Um, so lots of colorful cats and uh, planets and the moon. Um, and again, this has the purple like agate fabric. And uh, you know, I don't know if I was able to finish saying earlier what I was going to about how I redesigned the bag. These used to have five internal um, pockets and after sewing, sewing myself a few of those bags and testing them out I found that the three smaller pockets were not very useful and they actually just kind of got in the way of the project and the yarn and I felt like I was fighting with them a lot so now this just has your your main compartment and two additional pockets um, that are like the still the big pocket so there's two internal pockets plus the main compartment and I found that works a lot better for these bags so then the next design is one I already showed you but here it is all flattened and nice and new and um, so it's got the ferns and the mushrooms and this amber um, brown honey colored linen so I have some of these with the black drawstring and now I'll move on to my bats collection this is the one I was supposed to have um, three additional designs of bats, but again, I didn't finish them, so I'll have them next time. But I've got the my like candy bats is what I'm calling this one. And I really love this one. So they're all vibrant and neon, and they look like desserts. <laughs> so this one's really awesome. The inside. So the linings can sometimes vary if I run out of the fabric, but uh, most of these should all have the linings that I'm showing you. If you purchase one and receive one with a, a slightly different lining, I wanted to just put that out there. There might be one or two that have a different lining from what I'm showing here, and again, it's just because of running out of the fabric, but I always try to find something comparable and interesting. You know, some people just do like a basic solid cotton on the inside, which is fine, but I try to make it, you know, intriguing and kind of match the design of the bag because it's just more fun. It's not always possible, but I do my best. So for these next couple of bags, the inside is this gray bat fabric. So yeah, that's my candy bats. This one is just a solid um, linen, no metallic. Then this one is like my uh, party bats colorway. So very vibrant. It looks like uh, oil pastels. And again, I've got the gray bats. And this one has a black and gold metallic linen. So I love how vibrant this one is. Baby's starting to uh, wake up again. Getting, I think she's missing me. I'm right across from her, but we're a little too far away, I think. So then finally I have this one. And this one, um, it gets a little bit blown out because it's a really deep navy. And so it looks kind of um, washed out with the light, but it's this deep navy and there's beautiful bats and moths and foliage and it's again got the black and gold metallic and these most of these have this black strawberry fabric for the lining 
So those are the six bags that I have. I also have um, a few new colorways that are going in the shop. They still need their labels, but um, this is my Unusual Rose colorway. This is on a sock weight, a 75-25 Reno nylon. These ones are 462 yards, and they're inspired by um, some of my favorite roses that you don't see very often that have these plum and peach tones. So these are variegated. So I'll have some of these. I will have some of this one of a kind that I think um, I was inspired. I was inspired by the axolotl bags. I feel like this kind of looks like the crystal caves. Um, I used a bunch of leftover old dye stocks to make these, so I could probably recreate these. Maybe not exactly, but for the most part. So I just have three of these going into the shop this time. But they are so much fun. There's deep teals and lilacs and lavenders and a little bit of pink and um, deep blues. So yes, I love this one. Um, okay, I'm trying to wrap this up. Although I'm having fun recording. Um, I hate how few and far between it's been that I've been able to record, but as I've mentioned, I have a lot going on. So um, yeah, my baby, I keep pausing to go take care of her. She seems like she's okay for another few minutes. She really wants so, to be held in some attention, but, um, so yeah, I, oh, one thing I, I forgot to mention earlier, and I might cut this clip so that it's earlier on in the video, we'll see. So as I've talked about in previous podcasts, I knit the Calville shawl, which is one of my most favorite projects, and this is by Gabriella, the Mary Weather Knitting Podcast. This was her design, and, um, I have since, talking about it, I have blocked it. It was not blocked previously, so it has grown tremendously. The drape is stunning. This is 100% pure alpaca, some baby alpaca, I think. Um, this is the Juniper Moon Farm Harriet, and I think the colorway is just called orange or orange heather or what have you, but yeah, there's this beautiful, beautiful uh, moss stitch, the center spine column that runs down the shawl. We've got sort of this textured, almost basket weave or um, lattice sort of pattern and um, this pathway that's supposed to be like cobblestone and uh, flower buds and yes this is a very beautiful project I'm so happy it's October and fall and I'm going to a pumpkin patch this weekend to take some photos with my my daughter so I'm hoping it'll be cool enough to wear this sweater and also to bring this shawl because I love it and now that it's blocked the fabric it's so much um there's the drape is stunning the size of it is exactly what i was hoping for and i can't wait to get to actually use this so hi gabriella if you're watching i still love your shawl so much <laughs> and i tell people about this all the time um so yes i feel a gratitude that you even designed this because i love it so much i really do it was a lot of fun to knit and yeah, just look at this. It's perfect. It's perfect, you guys. I just want to snuggle it. It's so cozy and soft and wonderful. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, this shawl next to me is my 2021 Stephen West MCAL. So this is his MCAL from last year. Of course, um, I did modify the border, if you're familiar with it. So mine doesn't have the um, the final clue of the pattern. I I didn't knit it, I didn't like it so much, so I just did a Pico bind off after some ribbing. I followed uh, Volenbein, Kristen Lair. I liked her modification out of all the ones I saw, so I just followed her notes on how she uh, finished hers, and I did the same. These were all my hand dyed yarns as well, so I've got this shawl in many episodes, but um, yeah, so if you wanted to learn more, you could go back. But I figured I would put it here since it's MCAL season. Um, it's also Rhinebeck season, so if you're getting to go to Rhinebeck, then congratulations <laughs> and have so much fun. I got to go last year and that was amazing. I wish I was going again um, this year, hopefully next year. Uh, definitely it's not feasible right now with a baby and honestly needing to make some money and not spend it. <laughs> so um, have fun if you're going to Rhinebeck. Uh, yeah, 
All right, 53 minutes is what I'm at so far, and that's before I cut down any long pauses or transitions. So I met my goal, I think, for the most part. Uh, yeah. Um, so as I said before, if you would take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't, I would be super appreciative. I'm really trying to grow my business primarily, and what will help with that is getting this channel to grow, I think. Um, the algorithm hasn't quite picked me up. You know, I see sometimes people will start a podcast and um, they'll get thousands of views and subscribers right off the bat and it's great for them. And um, I wish that number didn't matter, like emotionally it doesn't matter, but in terms of actually getting exposure for my small business, my store and my online business, it's really, really hard. Um, it's such a wonderfully diverse, market and there's so many options for people you could purchase from which is how it should be and it's fantastic but because there's so much there's so many dyers so many um project bag makers podcasters it's a wonderful wonderful community but it is really hard to i guess get yourself out there when there's so many people to choose from um so if you've ever purchased anything from me or shown my channel support or whatever um I just appreciate you so much because I am so grateful that I get to do this and I hope to continue to get to do this and yeah so hopefully I will continue to grow and um, I would love for this to be something that my whole family could partake in um, so yeah I'm just waiting for my success <laughs> um, so yeah thank you for watching and I think I have some random vlogs vlog like footage that I've been kind of taking here and there um, after this. So if I do insert those things, then I hope you enjoy them and find them to be enjoyable in, in some aspect. But yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you next time, hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> um, bye. <laughs>waiting for my store to open for the day. I think I have about 15 minutes or so until I open the store. So I came to my shop a little early today due to some unforeseen circumstances that have since been remedied. But um, yeah, so I've been here for quite a while and I figured I would allow myself some time to knit today. It's a lot harder to find time for knitting um, since having my baby. And normally in the shop, 
now that I'm back here full time, I am working like mad on a bag collection I have coming out. Here's one that um, isn't finished, but it's next to me. So during my operating hours, when I don't have customers, I'm just sewing up lots and lots of bags and I've had next to zero time for knitting. So anyway, I'm, I'm grabbing these few minutes while I can. Um, yeah, I really absolutely love this pattern. Um, it's by Handmade Closet, the Cottage Swancho, and she has a couple of Swancho patterns. I really want to knit her Herbalist. That was the first one that she came out with, I think, and I had every intention of knitting that one first. Um, but as I was preparing to buy the yarn and the pattern, I don't know why, but this one really, it kind of struck me that I wanted to go ahead and make this one first. So, yeah, I'm, I'm making this one, and um, the yarns I'm using are from Lambstrings. She's my favorite indie dyer. Um, so I have four different colorways here. And I'm making the Swancho pretty similar to the, the sample design. Um, looking through people's, everybody else's projects, it kind of seems like most people went with this sort of color palette. And I think it's because it just works so perfectly. Um, yep, so it's all cinched up because it's on the needles right now, but it's, it's I can tell a good deal wider than this. Um, yeah, swanchos are so cool because, you know, they have, like, this is the, technically still kind of the yoke, if you want to call it that, and I haven't separated for sleeves, so there's all of this fabric and this length before you get down to the sleeves, which start probably close to here. So you've got this nice big wide body and these tiny little sleeves, and I find that to be really flattering on, like, every body type that I've ever seen it on. Um, so it's really, yeah, I'm, I'm just super thrilled, excited for this, and can't wait to knit all the swanchos, I think. Um, yeah. So I'm going to finish watching uh, Needles Out There Ready, Kevin and Ray. I've basically watched the entire episode, so I'm just finishing it up uh, while I'm working on this. As you can see, I'm wearing my love note today. It has been in the 90s this past week, so of course, with today dropping 16 degrees in temperature, although still in the 80s, um, it, it's a pretty decent second day of fall. So I'm working in my love note, and I'm actually the perfect temperature, so I was hoping I wouldn't be too warm as I usually am uh, when I try to wear a sweater this early, and that is not the case. So I'm enjoying thoroughly wearing my love note. I'm just finishing up my water for the elephant socks. I have just a few more decreases to go on the toe and then these will be off my needles and once this is done I actually have nothing cast on, nothing on my needles. Um, today is October 4th? Yeah, October 4th so the, the Stephen West knit along starts in two days so I think it's pretty cool that my needles are completely clear. Not that I won't cast on probably five things, but um, I'm pretty good at casting on one or two projects and knitting them until they're done. But how incredible is this pattern? I can't wait to put these on the sock blocker when I'm done. Using a stitch marker progress keeper from Woolen Forest. There's my Coochie Kopi bag. I actually like this side of the sock better, but the whole reason why I knit these socks for my mom is because of the elephant. The toe is done, so now these socks are done. I'm going to throw them on the blocker and just celebrate their beauty. Um, I guess I do have to weave in just a couple of ends, but that'll take just a second. Um, have I mentioned how much I want these socks for myself? Because I do. I have a good bit of this left over, plus 
a ton of the white skein left, so I might be able to get away with making myself a pair. And I guess if I got down to the toe and didn't have enough, I could just use something else to contrast since there's so much color intrigue in this anyway. So I think I will knit myself a pair eventually. After much debate, this is my final pick for the Stephen West MCAL for 2022. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know I was going back and forth on this for a long time, and today is October, what is that, the 6th or the 7th? The 6th, yeah, today is October 6th, 6th, today is cast on day, so I kind of needed to go ahead and, and pick my color palette. These came to me yesterday, and I'm so glad, although I am still looking at my other color choices over here and trying not to second guess myself because I could go on about this endlessly I think last year my kit which I will show you this was my 2021 shawl and I had no problem putting together these colors I think I maybe only went back and forth on one or two but I figured it out in a day but for this year, and I think it's because we only get three colors this year, whereas last year we had, I think this was five colors. So I was kind of able to use every color that I had my eye on, and I didn't really have to choose. I just love the 2021 MCAL. I hope that this year's is just as amazing. So yeah, just picking three colors was a lot harder. <laughs> But I dyed this, I was coming up with a new formula, and I love the depth in this one. I don't know if the camera is picking up everything, but there is so much tonality. So although this is a tonal, you can see there's there's depths of other shades in here, and it's just really, really beautiful. And Plum Tree, which is this purple yarn on my Merino Singles base, it has some depth to it too. There's kind of some orange um, spots where the dye has broken, but I, I very much love this shade. So I think these two together are amazing. And then of course this one, which is a very special colorway to me, Woodfire Clay, I think just goes so well with both because paired next to the ginger carrot cake, it brings out the orange tones, I think, in Woodfire Clay. But then Plum Tree brings out the, the purple tones in Woodfire Clay. So putting all three together, I think is so special. So here we go. I didn't even have a chance to put a label on um, this one yet because as soon as it was dry and I skeined it, I knew I had to snag one or two. These are some of the other colors I was looking at doing for my accent when originally I was doing, I was going to pair Plum Tree and Woodfire Clay with one of these as an accent yeah so I was leaning toward this one just because since it's supposed to be a pop this one was the most I think sort of vibrant and different so it would have had a higher contrast but when I took an, a poll on Instagram between that one and this one this one won and I can see why this that's a beautiful palette as well now that I'm looking at it I want to pick this almost for a, a purple palette but I'm worried that it might be a little bit too low contrast since it's, I mean, it is a purple yarn and there is clearly a difference between these two, but I don't want to run into a, a position where there's not enough contrast, like in a sweater I just knit, even though I was using two different shades paired uh, side by side with the knit stitches, it just looked so similar. You kind of lost some of the, the color definition. Well, now I'm in a bind. I almost wish I could just use all of these together. If 
I do this, I kind of get more of a jewel toned palette. And this one is moodier. And I wonder if I would wear this more. Well, by the time I put this video up, I will have made a choice. <laughs> that moment is not now. I hope I don't regret whichever one I pick. I mean, I, at the end of the day, I won't regret it. I'm still getting to knit something beautiful with yarns that I really love. This is definitely a very fall palette. It's They're both autumnal, but this one more so, clearly. Oh, decisions, decisions. I'm preparing to wind for the MCAL. I think what I'm going to do is just wind one each of my primary colors, my main color and my other main color. <laughs> My, he says it's your con contrast color, so a wine one skein each of these and hang on to the accent since we're not using it this week, but I'm not going to change my mind. I'm just not going to wind it yet, so I'm going to go ahead and wind these up and get started on clue one. A little behind the scenes of product photography, which I am no pro at, and every time I take photos, I try a different setup, so I'm trying my big box light with this marble tabletop and hoping that I can get a nice, clear, bright image to really show off these bags. Um, this is one of the collections that I have coming, or one of the designs for this. That's my phone. It's probably not a real phone call. Nope. Scam. <laughs> That's always fun. So yeah, a little behind the scenes of some product photography. I love this bag so much, so I hope that I can really capture it well with some beautiful photos.